everyone. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and you are watching RPV City Talk on the Road. I'm here with the great mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Dave Bradley, for the mayor's monthly update. And we are bringing you the update from the Ladera Linda Community Park project now in full swing. We're going to talk all about it and everything going on in the city. It is busy. Summer's here. Absolutely. It's an exciting time to be out and about. All right. Well, we are right out and about here. As you can see behind us, we've got Ladera Linda Project has kicked off. Um, just give the community a background about this project, where it's at, the progress taking place right now. So the Ladera Linda Community Park um, revitalization project is a long time coming. Um, it was about seven years in the planning process. Uh, we closed the park in uh, March of this year and embarked on an 18-month reconstruction project. As you can see behind us, things are in full swing. Uh, major demolition has been completed of the old school, and now it is uh, recontouring the, uh, the landscaping, getting ready to start uh, pouring foundations. This is about an 18 month project. We're about three months into it. Um, next summer, um, if all goes well, uh, we will ha be having the grand opening of the new com uh, Ladera Linda Community Park um, on this site. It's very exciting to see it uh, progressing as fast as it is. I believe the contractor is slightly ahead of schedule right now, yes. which is a fantastic thing in these days. Um, to see somebody actually having the uh, resources to be ahead of schedule. So uh, we're just can't be more excited about the progress that's being made here. All right, it's amazing to see this site wide open and what the future holds for it. Let's talk about the timeline going forward, what's sort of expected next. So uh, they'll finish the uh, recontouring of this site, uh, then they will start uh, pouring the foundation, and then they will start uh, the construction of the building facilities itself. And after that, then they will start doing the hardscaping and the rest of the landscaping of the new facility. And also for the community, you can go onto our city website, rpvca.gov. There's a construction page. They're updating it. There's even video being put on that and all the information. It's going to be exciting when we have the new park here, we have basketball, we'll have right. paddle tennis. Um, it's going to be something uh, to take the city into its second 50 years uh, as we kick off the uh, the second 50 year celebration of the birthday of the city. We can't wait and this is very exciting. And all this is, was the price tag on this about 18 million? It was about $18 million. Um, and uh, one of the really exciting things is we got the project kicked off before uh, we've seen the economy change recently. Um, inflation has uh, started to creep up. Uh, fortunately, we were able to baseline the project uh, before some of those uh, financial or fiscal discontinuities. All right, since we're talking about funding right now, let's move on to talk about the fact that the city council at the last meeting was able to pass the 2022-2023 fiscal year budget um, and uh, the budget for the five-year capital improvement program, as well as the uh, city's improvement authority. That's excellent. It's been months and months of planning by staff and council. So just give us an update on um, the budget that was adopted and sort of the status of the city's finances right now. Yeah, at the last council meeting, we adopted the 2022-2023 uh, uh, budget, which the city continues to be uh, very fiscally cons uh, conservative. Um, we have been budgeting um, uh, through the pandemic um, with making sure that the city was going to come out as financially uh, strong as possible. So um, right now, things are looking good. Our um, uh, property tax revenue, which is about 40% of the 46% uh, of the budget, uh, which is probably the most consistent portion of the budget, uh, continues to remain strong. Um, our transit occupancy tax, which is primarily from Terranea, is back up again. Uh, Terranea has uh, really come out of the uh, pandemic shutdown well and uh, seems to be thriving. Um, our golf tax from uh, the Trump National Golf Course also has come back uh, very nicely. So the city coffers are um, uh, and our uh, revenue are very uh, stable right now. Um, that in addition to uh, uh, adopting the budget to be able to go forward and uh, do the uh, improvement projects that are on our um, on our list of things to do this year, it's an exciting time. And the city has come out of the pandemic in a better financial state than almost any of our peer or near peer cities. So it's an exciting time. And that has to do with the 
uh, conservative nature of how the council spends money, as well as the planning that's involved, which brings me to the next point in the City Council also adopted what is the 2022-2023 financial model. Um, explain how the model uh, comes together for our city, this financial model, and, and the purpose of it, and how important of a tool it is for our future planning for our finances. So the uh, city staff, uh, primarily our finance department, uh, comes up with some financial projections on what we're, the uh, general economy is going to be like, what our spending is going to be like, also what our revenues are going to be like. And then uh, the city council evaluates that and we decide how conservative we want to be. In the past, we've been relatively conservative uh, on uh, underestimating um, our revenues and then also trying to constrain some of our spending. Um, one of the things during uh, the pandemic is we had several positions on staff that uh, were not filled. Um, uh, now we are are in a better place now. We have a better understanding of the go forward. So we are filling some of those critical staff positions now. Um, certainly in public works is one of the departments that uh, has several openings. So if you know anybody that is an experienced project manager or civil engineer, um, we urge people to uh, apply. It's a phenomenal place to work in. What a project a, like this. Yes, like, we'll exactly. This. Let's now move on to talk about the model for the city goals. And I, I have to congratulate you because as Mayor, you said to the city uh, council and staff, I think we should change the format. Let's make it more user friendly to show our community what our city goals are. You tweak them every year. This council did adopt the 2022-2023 goals using the new model. Right. So explain what um, the goals that, you know, the process and, and how we came to this point. So the goals that we had previously, while all valid, were so many of them. I mean, we were up to about 136 individual goals, um, and it really became a logistic difficult to track them all. Um, so one of the um, uh, ideas that we had was to simplify the goals, uh, reduce them into some major um, uh, aspirational goals to, for the city. Try to get rid of some of the goals that probably were more like general work practices. Um, we were able to do that. We were able to coalesce those goals down into six major categories um, and then have those as a work plan and take some project management tools and have some uh, work burn down plans uh, to accomplish those goals. We have six major categories that all the city goals come under. I thought for an exercise I could, as mayor, you could take us through. We'll just hit a few goals in each category. Like sure. We're starting with public safety. Give the community example of, you know, what is the goal on the list right now regarding public safety in our city? So one of it is to reduce crime by 5%. Um, and uh, that is several uh, multifaceted to go execute that goal. So staff will be generating plans and working with the uh, public safety committee as well as uh, LA County Sheriff uh, to be able to look at how to reduce crime, um, how to um, attack the various uh, constituencies in crime, and help us have even a safer city. We're already one of the safest cities in California, mm -hmm. but you can never be too safe. So we're going to continue to work for that and continue to burn this down. Okay, next goal, infrastructure. What We could, spend, we could have many shows just on goals for infrastructure, but... You know, what are the hit on the key points? So one of the biggest goals in infrastructure is to come up with a uh, mitigation plan for Portuguese Bend. Um, we have the distinction within our city of having the most active landslide in North America. Um, various reasons uh, behind why that is. Uh, we're working with uh, various uh, constituencies at the federal, state, um, local county level as well as uh, regional level uh, to try to find funding to be able to solve this regional problem. Uh, but that is one of our major goals. Uh, the third category is city land and facilities and uh, civic center Huge. project on top of the list. Right. Which is, you know, after Ladera Linda will be the next major capital improvement project within the city. Uh, we're excited to uh, get that going. Um, the uh, committee that is looking at the designs and the different aspects of it is in full swing. We're having uh, various customer, or the customer, community outreaches, customer outreaches, uh, to look at what the Civic Center needs to be. Uh, we're looking at financing options. We're looking at... Um, 
options uh, with um, the county and other infrastructure to see what we want to have at the uh, Civic Center. Um, it's an exciting time. And the whole community is going to be involved in this process. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yes. And that will bring us to our next category, which is citizen involvement. That is a priority of this council and prior councils to keep this community engaged. Um, so under that category, what would be a few goals you could highlight? So one of the things that we have, and we are just blessed to have such an involved citizenry within the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, every time we have openings on a committee or a commission, the the width, the breadth and depth of um, folks experience that come and volunteer for those positions is really mind boggling. So it is so exciting. Uh, but that's what we want to continue. We want to continue to get the community involved, mm -hmm. um, to get those uh, diverse opinions and experiences to be able to help Rancho Palos Verdes uh, enter our second half century, uh, a stronger city. We're going to move on to our uh, last category to highlight. Actually, we have two more. Government yes. efficiency, transparency and accountability. Um, what will fall under that for the next coming year for goals? So uh, under government efficiency is actually implement our goals and uh, in the new format, which is going to be uh, much more streamlined. I believe it's going to be much more easy, much easier to status, take less staff time to status and be much more efficient. We're going to move on. Uh, still on the area of goals, though, um, you're talking about sort of future goals. But if we just look, reflect on the past year, some goals you might want to highlight because the quarterly report was given um, about goals that have been are off the list because they've been accomplished. Anything you want to highlight? Well, I mean, one of the things that we've uh, got accomplished is we got the Ladera Linda Park uh, kicked off, uh, which is behind us going in full swing right now. Uh, the uh, National uh, Communities Conservation Plan and Habitat Conservation Plan, or the NCCP, HCP, um, are, get, are, are continuing to be executed on. Uh, Western Avenue redevelopment, which is really an interesting project. Um, Western Avenue, a very complex major artery within the city um, and complex because it's not only administered by the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, the city of Los Angeles and Caltrans. Um, and because the three agencies are all involved, it's a little bit harder to coordinate things, but we're really making a concerted effort and have kicked off the Western Avenue beautification plan to um, add some additional foliage, uh, to try to paint the, uh, the walls to uh, make that foliage pop and really bring it together and make it look visually pleasing when you're driving along the Western Avenue corridor. Um, which is an exciting time. Uh, and we're really making a concerted effort to improve Western Avenue All it, right. visually. We're going to talk about another major improvement. Right up the street here on PV Drive South is Hatano Farm, the city's beloved farm. Hatano Farm, yes. Yes, and each show we've been talking about is updating the community. How about the latest on where the city is going with um, the future of this farm? So we are working with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy right now to, uh, who is the habitat um, monitor and uh, maintains habitat for us uh, within the reserve uh, to help us uh, operate Hatano Farm. Um, it's going to be um, operated as a historic farm. We're still going forward trying to get national historic designation as well as state historic site designation. Um, but we plan on operating that farm. Uh, we're working with Mr. Martinez to continue to operate to um, lead that farm. Um, as we go forward. And then it will also be in uh, compliance with the um, state wildlife requirements for usage of the uh, property. So it's a win-win-win um, as we continue to uh, go forward with Hatano Farm. It's an exciting time. They say time flies when you're having fun. We are halfway through your year as mayor. We're at the halfway point. So I thought this would be an opportunity for you to give the community a your state of the city, if you will, midterm report, what you might want to highlight sure. where we're at. Well, things are great. Uh, the city is in great shape. Uh, we have a couple issues like you would imagine. I, I can't imagine any city without a couple issues. Uh, we've updated the housing element um, and the housing uh, community development group from uh, Sacramento came down at our invitation and we walked through our housing element. We had received um, 
numerous comments on the original draft, but we were able to sit down with them and walk them through it. And they were very appreciative of us asking them down. In fact, we're one of the few cities that have asked them actually to come down to the city. Um, they let us know that the amount of comments that we had was actually about half of what the number of comments that most cities receive. So we were pretty uh, excited by that. Um, but we're continuing to work with the state uh, to make sure that we um, comply to uh, state statute, uh, but also maintain the feel of the community and we continue to maintain a phenomenal place where we live. So you're making progress, so this, this is good news. Also progress on funding for dealing with Portuguese Ben. Portuguese Bend has been one of the perennial uh, issues that we've had. As I said earlier, we have the distinction of having the most active landslide in North America. Um, recently, Senator Feinstein was able to put into legislation uh, some um, earmarks to help us with the uh, beginning of that project, which is uh, we're continuing to work with both federal, state, uh, county, as well as local area uh, to come up with funds to go address that and try to uh, slow what in some places are moving at 8 to 12 inches a year and move that down into single digits. Well, I think the city has requested in federal funds up to like $33 million. Is that right? Yes, and, it, and it's a multi-phase project that would uh, help mitigate uh, Portuguese Bend. Right. Um, as we sit, sit here across from the trailhead to Forestall, uh, makes me think to move on to the next topic, which is so important to our city, and that's the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. Um, we can go hiking right up into the preserve from here in so many areas. Um, how, are we, how are we doing mid-year in terms of managing the preserve and the open space and, and all the people that want to come and enjoy it? So one of the things that uh, Rancho Palos Verdes has is we have almost 1,400 acres of open preserve uh, space. The Palos Verdes, Pacens, Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy operates the nature preserve for us and helps with mitigation and helps with bringing back native plants and native species. Um, it continues to be um, work well. Um, it's a partnership with the Conservancy. Um, the Conservancy is not part of the city, but it operates in uh, tandem with the city um, as our agent to help with the conservation of that land, um, which brings the whole uh, feel of Rancho Palos Verdes very much different than other cities uh, with the 1,400 acres of uh, open space. So because summer's here, we know it's going to be a lot busier. People will be coming to enjoy. If you ever see issues in our preserve, we have our park rangers out there. Um, please call our rangers. I have a phone number up on the screen, 310-491-5775. And uh, reach out um, You know if there's any issues you see. And remember to bring water. Absolutely. It's hot out here. <laughs> uh, and actually, we've actually had some folks get into trouble in some of, uh, on some of the trails that don't bring water. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we highly encourage folks to bring water. We do have our rangers uh, preserve, uh, patrolling the reserve. In fact, one of our rangers just drove by um, uh, about three minutes ago. All right. Well, what is definitely moving along are our plans for the city's 50th anniversary celebration. This is very exciting under your leadership. Um, talk about that, where we're going. So the city and the city staff is going to break out into a year-long celebration and we're going to have a, a, a monthly event to celebrate the city. Um, we are coming up on the, uh, the beginning of the 49th year of the city uh, in September of this year and we will be having a, um, an event every month. September 7th. September 7th, thank 2023 you. 2023 is our city's 50th. So yes. we kick off September 7th, 2022, with excitement at City Hall. Right. So one of the really circle of life, things come back to where they started. Uh, we will be renaming the Civic Center after Councilman Ken Dida, um, who was on the first city council uh, 49 years ago. He was one of the uh, city's founding fathers. He was uh, instrumental in forming the city um, based on local control and getting it moving. So it's going to be really exciting to be able to rename the Civic Center after one of our founding fathers who is continuing to serve 49 years later. He's a he's legend. He's still a sitting councilman and as sharp as ever. So it's excited to be able to give that, um, that honor to somebody that's currently on city council. 
Uh, in fact, city council had to amend one of our rules that we would not name a city facility after a living person um, because this is such a special time and it was seen by the rest of the council to be uh, really appropriate to be able to uh, honor uh, Councilman Dida like that. Councilmember Dida is so humble and with all he has done over 50 years to help our city get formed, all the committees he's served on so many things um, and he's you know he's excited but he He's just low key about it all, but he's so deserving and I'm so thankful that you, the council, were able to overturn that rule um, for this situation because he deserves to be here when he gets recognized. This is certainly a one-off. This is not something that we plan on doing on a regular basis and it's just exciting to be able to name it. Uh, then in October we'll be doing the Harvest Festival. Uh, in November we'll be doing a historic uh, talk and walk with our RPV TV. Yes. Uh, which will be exciting. Uh, December will um, be our holiday uh, party. Uh, January uh, will be a historic scavenger hunt. I like that. That should be really interesting in January to go around the city on a scavenger hunt. I'm really looking forward to seeing what staff has in store for us there. Uh, February will be a, uh, a History of Rancho Palos Verdes art contest. So I uh, expect that our students and some of our young uh, adults will be active in that. There could uh, be a well. lot of paintings and drawings of the lighthouse. Absolutely. To Whale of a Day, which is one of our really exciting events yes. within the city. Uh, down at uh, Point Vicente Interpretive Center, we'll be doing Whale of a Day again. Uh, May will be a uh, picnic at the Forest City Tree Grove. Ryan Park. At Ryan Park, we'll be oh, down okay. there. I was going to say, that's I'm where not all those tree Yeah, that's right there, Ryan right. Park, where all the trees are. And then uh, June will be the concerts in the park, uh, followed with July is our annual 4th of July celebration. Uh, August will be a uh, event with our sister city, Sukura, Japan, um, which is a phenomenal place. I, I had the opportunity to go visit Sukura uh, on a business trip um, right before the pandemic. So, it's such uh, a special partnership that we have now as sister cities. Moving on to the big month of September, when September we really are 2023. 50. We'll be having a celebration at a party um, on the site of the historic marine land. At Terranea. Uh, which is now Terranea. Um, you know, the Terranea, folks at Terranea have turned that into an oasis there on the point. Um, I do remember fondly uh, Marine Land, but Terranea uh, could not be more beautiful. And we'll be having a uh, birthday celebration at Terranea in September of 2023. This is exciting. Come on out. Put yes. it on your calendar now. Every month we'll have a lot of fun planned for the community, so stay tuned for all that. And we know how to throw a party in Rancho Palos Verdes. Yes, we do. We do. Um, we're going to talk more about the 4th of July when we wrap it up and what's going on there. But um, you just met with your uh, local chairs and advisory uh, of the advisory committees um, in the city. They presented their biannual reports to our city council at the last meeting. Um, all these volunteers that are on the numerous uh, from the traffic committee, the civic center advisory committee that we could go on and on and on. And then the planning commission, they do incredible work for the city. So they come to the council, they presented their reports just sort of any takeaways. You weren't at that council meeting as well, but just the highlights of what you're hearing from all the chairs about what they're getting done. So it is vital for our committees and our commissions. Um, the city council of the five of us just cannot do all the work that it it takes for community involvement to help run the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. So I'm always grateful to the commissions and um, committees for doing some of that yeoman work um, on helping craft policy and bringing suggestions to city council. So we ask uh, each of the committees and commissions to come back um, every six months and just talk to us about what they're hearing out there in their committee, uh, traffic safety, infrastructure, uh, community uh, commu uh, civic center, um, the finance advisory committee, um, as well as the planning commission, uh, public safety. Um, so they came back with their midterm reports on things that are going on, things what, that are going on uh, within their uh, span of control, uh, and came back with some um, suggestions. I meet with the chair of each one of those uh, commissions and committees every month. Uh, we have a, a mayor's breakfast. Um, so we like to stay connected 
to the grassroots and stay connected to the folks that are uh, out there in the community. It takes a, it takes a village. Yes, yes. And uh, the big village uh, I want to talk about next will be gathering at the City Hall site for 4th of July. Um, and this is a very exciting time. You're um, working on your pie eating skills. I am, um, <laughs> unfortunately, and I hate to report this, but the last two years, um, and I'm going to put it down to uh, the COVID restrictions, I came up a little bit short in a one-on-one -on -one pie eating contest with uh, Councilman Krushank. Um, this year, Councilman Krushank is going to come away defeated, and I will come away with the belt. All right. Um, I believe we're going to open it up to uh, more participants this year, but there's only one person I need to beat this year, and it, John Krushank, I'm coming for you. So what the mayor is saying, he's not going to have egg on his face. It's going to be pie on his face. I will have pie on my face. And our PVTV will be there to film it. Um, and Obviously, when the show is running during the month of July, it will have already happened, so we'll really know the results sooner than later. Um, but the 4th of July celebration has been going on year after year. We had to take a break during COVID. Um, the excitement of being together is huge, and this is still so much fun. Uh, absolutely. So this year, we're able to actually get ahead of it and actually do some planning. Last year, we decided to do the 4th of July celebration with about two weeks of planning um, because we weren't really sure what was happening with COVID. Uh, this year, we've had the normal planning cycle, uh, so it's going to be a phenomenal party. So I encourage everyone to come out, um, enjoy some games, some food. Uh, come out in the community and enjoy one another. It's going to be exciting. But on the note of fireworks, the city is really stepping up enforcement and fines. So don't light fireworks. They're illegal in our city um, and dangerous. Actually, all cities on the peninsula. So okay. all four cities have ordinances that uh, prohibit the lighting of fireworks. We live in a extreme fire hazard area. Um, fireworks, well, you know, beautiful are just not compatible with a high fires uh, risk area. So we are just petrified that something will get away from us. And in this time of excessive drought, uh, just don't do it. Yes. Uh, go to one of the professional displays where there's professionals doing it. Go to a community park. Uh, there's many firework displays throughout the community, um, not in our community, but throughout the South Bay. I highly encourage you to do that just don't light off those fireworks um, yourself. Say no, there's they're a thousand dollar fine for the first offense. The steepest fine is seventy five hundred dollars. So beyond besides the, the that, um, but just the danger to yourselves too. I mean, they're not danger to yourself, but it's also a danger to your neighbors, danger to our community. Mm -hmm. um, so just don't be that person. Okay. Well, we're really excited. Summer activities. There's so much happening in the city um, between movies in the park, you name it, and just. Such a beautiful city to be part of. We got you know down at the beach. Anything that you want to add that you're looking forward to this summer? I'm looking forward to a safe summer. Um, I want to make sure that you know folks uh, remember good safety uh, for backyard pools. Um, we talked about fireworks safety. Make sure your um, homes are um, are safe. Um, certainly for higher fire, high fire season, uh, LA County uh, Fire has been going around doing mm -hmm. uh, uh, brush analysis yep. and uh, defensive uh, zones around everyone's house. I encourage everyone to make sure that they are in compliance with what LA County Fires has asked you to do. Um, it's only to protect you and the community. It's time to wrap it up officially. Any final thoughts for you as mayor as we head into the summer months? Absolutely. Things are uh, things are well in the city. So uh, you asked uh, the state of the city. The state of the city is strong as we go into uh, July of uh, 2022. Uh, looking forward to our our major birthday party in yes. uh, September of 2023. And so, looking oh. forward to the ribbon cutting here, but that's months down the road. Absolutely. Right. So. Thank you all very much. It's been great working with you again, Mayor Dave Bradley, for your update, all that's going on in the city. You have a great summer. Thanks for tuning in to RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson with the mayor. See you next time.